on a new type of hardware for computing. Computing is changing. There's a lot of emphasis now on low power computing and on data retention. Applications that will benefit from this are wearables, Internet of Things, data mining, and artificial intelligence. We need devices that can retain their state of logic without power. That's known as non-volatility. And we also need to be able to read their state uh, or switch their state while supplying just a minimum amount of power to them. These devices also have to be small, a few billionths of a meter on a side. And there's no existing technology that meets these simultaneous demands. We and others have been making micro mechanical switches for a number of years. We can make them work up to millions of cycles, but they use metallic contacts and they're susceptible to problems such as adhesion and wear. For this project, we will explore a new contact material known as uh, conducting oxides. So we will explore putting these new contact materials into a device that John has been working on. Yeah, as Martin pointed out, we're really trying to build a game changer switch. It's a mechanical switch, similar to the toggle switch you have in your home to turn the light on and off, but now a billion of times smaller, in which now we're going from a lever to actually a piston, but it's moving up and down. We're actually using a, a pitfall of memories. Memory elements that exist in the electronics are based on germanium telluride. This material is such that uh, when it goes, a phase transformation actually undergoes a 10% volume expansion. There's very few material in nature that can do that. Uh, water, for example, is one of them. When you face transition from uh, water to ice, you have a volumetric expansion. Can we do that with solid state materials? Yes, uh, one of them is actually germanium telluride. Interestingly, germanium telluride was initially used as an electronic switching material, but had a problem because when it was undergoing the phase transition, it was actually expanding and actually was causing failure of these memories. And there we take advantage of its change in resistance, right? Correct. So we look at it in a different way, and instead of looking at the resistance change, we decided to look at this mechanical property and look at exploiting effectively or harnessing these mechanical expansions. Uh, our part of the project is to look at the contact uh, interface that's made when you make and break these contacts. And a lot of progress has been made on making these switches work for millions of cycles at the micro scale. We want to look at uh, degradation mechanisms and how to solve them at the nano scale. One area of application where I think this technology can really make a difference is Internet of Things. For example, once this technology becomes available, you could think about having implantables whose battery will never need to be replaced. One very important early result that we have is that we've demonstrated the operation of the device that John is talking about. It's, we call it the phase change nanomechanical switch. Yeah, we just brought a paper together actually at the IEEE International Electron Device Meeting this year. That was a microscale prototype. And now we're facing challenges, of course, about miniaturizing this device. We're trying to go to nanoscale films and nanoscale air gaps. But another challenge is taking the technology to the next level is actually working with circuit designer and computer architecture people. Fortunately, at CMU, we have these people. We have actually a prime researchers in both circuits and architecture. And we believe with their help, we can actually take this technology to the marketplace. We'd like to acknowledge early funding that we got from uh, CMU's Kavik Mura Fund. And now we've recently gotten funding from the National Science Foundation. It's their Leap High program. And we're funded to work on these problems for the next four years.